Hey everybody, this is part two on the Strymon Iridium. And in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to, I've got it all hooked up through an interface and we are going to kind of go through some of the features and the sounds and I'm going to show you some of the ways that I've been using it the last couple of months. So uh, in the first video, I said there's three amps in it. So over here, you can see that we have three amps. The, the round is the Fender, the chime, is the Voxish, the Punch is the Marshallish, and we'll kind of do a little bit on each. So, uh, on the left, so, sorry, right side here, you can see it says cab. So, each amp can have three different speakers or speaker cabs to choose from. And <clears throat> I don't have them memorized, you know, what comes stock with this. Um, but some of them are IRs that Strymon made, and some of them are aftermarkets. Like I know a couple of them comes from Ownhammer, and uh, I actually purchased some a pretty big Ownhammer pack after I got this, and I'll kind of show you some of the IRs that I like uh, from that pack. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start on just the round and. I'm going to set everything kind of flat first here. So this is the drive, which you can just think of as the amount of gain. And then over here is just the overall level. I probably won't be touching this much except for um, some of the pedals that I push it with kind of pushes up the volume. So I may take that down a tick so it doesn't scare everybody. Uh, and then you just have bass, metal, uh, bass, middle, and treble. And over here is the room control, which is, in my opinion, the most important control. If you're wondering why I'm wearing headphones, it's because this makes no sound unless you have something plugged into it, either headphones or having it come out to a speaker. So rather than just try to guess what it sounds like, I figured I'd throw in some headphones. Um, the way we do have it set up, though, it's running out of the left and the right into an audio interface. So everything that you hear out of here is basically what it's going to sound like if you're recording with it. Also, we have everything kind of panned hard left and hard right, so that kind of demonstrates what it sounds like with the headphones on, um, because there is very much a stereo effect when you're using the headphone jack. This is by far the best sounding headphone device I've ever plugged into. Uh, that was the, really the thing that grabbed me about it. So we've got it set on round and again i don't have all the cabinets memorized so we'll just kind of flick through them quickly and i'll tell you which ones that i like the best so this is the sound actually let's do this this is the sound with it off which is terrible right so now let's kick it on it's awful So right away you can hear the difference, much more amp-like. Uh, so this is the round, the Fender. Uh, let's play around, let's try a different cab. First one. it's got three different cabs. One of them is a 112. I think the other one is a 212. And then there, another one might be a 410. It's hard for me to remember. I have old man memory. Uh, but all of those can be changed uh, through the IR um, manager loader. Uh, pro, and it's a program. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. So let's look at the drive. How much drive can you get out of it? And I may bring this down a little bit as I bring the drive up. That's with it dimed. So that's again, that's the Fender ish channel with the drive all the way up. Uh, let's take a look at the chime. I'm not going to play too much with the EQ controls because we'll be here all day if I do. So this is the Vox ish. Try a different cab. So 
So I will say though that it does have the mid cuts, the top boost. So it is kind of set up like a Vox amp. This is the this amp is the one I'm least familiar with on here because I'm not a Vox amp guy. <laughs> So the middle doesn't work how you would think a mids would. This is, it's a, it's a mid cut. So that's with the mids all the way up. And as you turn it, it starts to cut the mids. And there is a lot of drive in the Vox one. I'm gonna turn this down. A whole lot of people on the internet, that's their favorite one. It's just, I'm not a box guy. So again, here, without, with a amp. All right, let's go to the punch because my favorite is the fender, or sorry, the round. And then my second favorite is the punch, which is the Marshall-ish type of amp. So. Now, if you're hearing this difference in kind of an expanded left and right or stereo effect, that's because I used uh, some aftermarket IRs that I got from Own Hammer. So, and speaking of which, I made a little clip of what the software looks like. So you can see that it's pretty easy. You know, this is what it looks like uh, when you download it from Strymon and it's as easy as dragging and dropping them into place. Don't forget you have to hit uh, save and you have to hit sync so that it saves it on the pedal. So, and that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, it is a rabbit hole. I spent about three hours finding just the right IRs for the punch. I just didn't have the energy to find just the right IRs for the round channel. I'll get to it when I have a couple of free hours, but you can hear it is a very wide sounding type of speaker. I'm gonna turn the gain up a little bit. And what's funny is that's, uh, actually this is a, an IR of the speaker that I use in my Bogner, uh, Scumbag H175. And then the other two are actually Fender cabs. I just like the way they sounded with the Marshall. All right, now let's drive. Let's push the drive on this one because I mean that's what a Marshall is all about. Oh boy, that's going to be loud. All right, plenty of gain. It's not doesn't get into like super like metal territory, but it's pretty heavy. So the one thing that we haven't done, we haven't played with is the room control. So everything you've heard so far is very dry as if you were just sticking a mic on your amp and that's going into some sort of recording device or interface. Where it comes alive for me is with the room. So I'm gonna stay on the uh, punch, which is the Marshall-ish. And I'm gonna start bringing in the room. So what is the room? Well, that's blending in not just the mic directly on the speaker, but some of the acoustic qualities of the room that it's in. There are three different rooms, uh, small, medium, and large. I believe it ships with the medium, which is what I have it set on. Uh, I've not tried the small and I've not tried the large. I'm sure they sound great, but one's if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So I'm gonna start dialing this up a little bit and you can hear it does just kind of bring it to life. I like it. Here. Now I like a pretty wet signal.
totally changes the character. Absolutely. It's as, they, sh they could put this in a pedal all by itself and I'd be like, absolutely. Okay, so now that's some general sounds. Again, I didn't play around with the EQ. You could spend all day doing that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the Fender-ish one. And I'm gonna start plugging in some of my kind of leftover pedals. And yeah, there's one of them on here that's fairly pricey. And then the others, some of them, like I think this one I got for like 25 bucks way back in the day. Um, they were all just ones that I had laying around. They're, this is not my main pedal board. That's why it's a mess and everything. So um, let's start by throwing the compressor in. Again, I'm not going to go into detail about what each one is and all of that. Just going to kind of show what it sounds like. And a little bit of echo or delay. told Larry I wasn't going to get into this, but some of the gripes about this is that there's not an effects loop, so all of your reverbs and delays have to kind of go into the front of it. Unless you're plugging into an interface, then you could plug this into the delay and the delay to the interface. But these are classic designs. Classic designs didn't have effects loops. They just liked them right in front. So don't be afraid of sticking a delay pedal in front of, a, of an amp. It's going to be just fine. So let's get into a little bit of the drive. I'll put this back just a little bit so it doesn't scare everybody. I have found out of most of the drives I've tried, Tube Screamers work awesome with this. Uh, there's just a good sound with them. It may be a little bit bright. Brothers, I've got set up for actually not just one fuzz. Here, I'm going to pull this back again. But two fuzzes together. And when I'm feeling crazy, I go ahead and turn the tube screamer on as well. This old, uh, this for some reason, these pedals have a huge volume boost, so I'm going to kind of compensate for that before I kick it on. A good old vibe, which sounds really cool if we turn them all on at the same time. guitar sound. Okay, now let's talk about how I've personally been using it. So, well, kind of what you see, all of these things plugged in using my headphones. So I spend hours at home, my wife can tell you, like literally hours plugged into this and just practicing and playing. And all you hear is, if you don't have the headphones on, is this plinky, plinky, plink for hours and hours and hours. I don't get yelled at because it's not waking anybody up. It's not really annoying anybody, except for the cat. For some reason, just the sight of me with a guitar makes the cat run. Um, and then it's plugged into the interface, which this is the interface they typically use, but we're plugged into Larry's interface, interface, and uh, using it for Zoom. So what I did was I made a short little clip, which you can probably see right now.
of me recording a Zoom session, and I kind of demonstrate what it sounds like with it off, and then turning it back on, and then I turn it off again, and I turn it back on. And I can tell you that just from listening to students side of things where they're just plugged directly into their interface or computer without any kind of help or just using an amp in the background, the sounds are not all that great. And uh, you can hear it makes a huge difference on Zoom. Uh, you also, I've done a little bit of recording with this. I don't, I'm having troubles with my my uh, DAW right now, but uh, it's awesome for that. I've made a couple of little jam tracks for students, uh, which has been pretty fun. It makes it a lot faster than trying to like put a mic on an amp, and of course it makes it so you can do that at any time. It's very portable. I brought it to Hilton Head. We went to Hilton Head a couple of weeks ago on vacation, and I it was kind of a working vacation. I was still teaching from Hilton Head, so I just kind of threw this board together. I, put it in a bag, I brought my guitar, my computer, and my little interface, and off we went to Hilton Head and just did it right there um, in, uh, on Hilton Head Island. It was pretty cool. The students got into it. They thought it was pretty funny that I was on vacation and still doing my, still doing my lessons. So that is the general overall kind of sounds I've been getting out of mine um, and about as much tweaking as we probably have time for. Uh, my thoughts on it are, don't, I'm not going to sell any of my guitar amps, but it absolutely serves a purpose for me uh, for being able to teach and rehearse and record at very quiet or basically silent levels. Uh, I think it sounds great. I like that it's all knobs and switches, and the only time you have to use a computer screen is if you're changing the IRs on it. So. I've had a lot of fun with it. I hope that this kind of clears up what it does and what it sounds like. Believe me, there's a lot more to it. You know, you get it and it's just like any piece of gear. You sit down with it and spend hours and you're gonna find all kinds of tones that you really like with it. And my name's John and this has been a video for uh, more music and moreguitars.com. And I hope everybody has a great day and I'll see you in the next video.